Welcome back. So um, we were talking about erosional coasts. Typically, not always, typically near active margins and the landforms we see there. So this image was of that. Um, rocky cliffs, sea stacks, arches, headlands, uh, little to no beaches. This is more uh, typical of an erosional coast. Um, now, the opposite of that would be depositional coast. Typically, more so associated with passive margins away from plate boundaries, but not always. Typically. Uh, tend to occur on the trailing edges of plates. Again, tend to occur, not always occur. So these are going to be away from um, uh, plate boundaries. Typically exhibit low relief, wide coastal plains. Um, the landforms we see are characterized by the transportation and accumulation of a wide range of sediments and sediment types. So this is uh, uh, material being deposited, creating landforms, as opposed to material being taken away. They may experience erosion, weathering and erosion, at certain times in places due to storms, uh, depletion of sediment supply, rising sea level, etc. But for the most part, what we're seeing there is a collection of deposited sediment creating landforms. Um, you know, storms, hurricanes can, you know, devastate and destroy completely weather and erode whole areas, but in general, depositional coasts are typified near. Uh, or near passive margins tend to, but not always. The Atlantic and Gulf Coast of the U.S. are very representative of these uh, depositional coasts, where the West Coast of the U.S. is more erosional coast. So let's talk about sand transport. So they're uh, moving material around. Typically when you're looking at shore, the, the size of sediment, the type of sediment we're looking at is sand. Um, sand can be moved around via something called beach drift. This is the movement of sand along the shoreline due to the in and out wave motion uh, that's known as excuse me, beach drift. So you have the sand on the beach. Right? When the ocean comes in, it kind of moves some of that sand up, and when, it, when the ocean comes back down, it, the sand moves down, kind of moving it in, moving it out, moving it in, moving it out. However, sometimes the, the waves, as they hit, they don't hit straight on, they hit at an angle. So they push the sand kind of up at an angle, and then it comes back down. And then up at a little bit more angle, and then back down. So that sand actually gets pushed along up and down the beach, known as beach drift. Longshore drift is off the, off the beach, so kind of just off in the shallows. It's an accumulation of wave, current, and wind motion, uh, kind of moving uh, water and any sediment in the water along the shore, actually parallel to the shore, uh, and this is known as longshore current. And that longshore current, if it has any sediment in it, uh, is known as longshore drift. So the movement of sand and water due to this current is known as longshore drift. Um, you always look for sediment deposition and erosion to, to find the drift direction. So what we'll do in, in lab is identify a bunch of these landforms, both erosional and depositional, but depositional, a lot of it tied to longshore drift. It's not the direction of the waves you see in a particular picture, but it's we're looking at the, the, the direction of sediment deposition to find the longshore drift direction. So here's beach drift. Again, the waves kind of coming in, going out, coming in, going out, coming in, going out. That sand kind of gets pushed up and back down, up and back down. So the net movement of sand would be kind of up and to the right on this picture. It's beach, beach drift. But the uh, kind of collection of current, waves, and wind also create a net movement of water and material moving up and to the right just off the shore, known as longshore current. And if there's any sediment uh, kind of out here in the water, depending on how how, how big the waves are, the bigger the waves, the more materials can be brought out into this area, then in general you're getting a movement up and to the right in the ocean, just off the shore of sediment known as longshore drift, caused by the longshore current. Uh, because of these longshore currents, you get these different depositional landforms, such as sand spits, baymouth bars, barrier islands, tombolos, just to name a few and kind of note the direction of longshore current. Remember, longshore current is always going to be parallel to the parallel to the shore. So a lot of these depositional features are kind of lengthwise parallel to the shore. Not all. Um, so first let's talk about a spit. 
A spit is an extension uh, or extended stretch of beach material that projects out to the sea and is joined to the mainland at one end. So here's an example of a of a spit. Can you guess the direction of longshore drift? So here's the beach here. Can you direct the direction guess the direction of longshore drift? Remember, it's either parallel, it's parallel to the shore, so it's either kind of upward in this image or downward in this direction. Well, this sediment that was moved and creating this extension of the spit indicates to me that the longshore drift is down, uh, which might be south in this case, depending on where we're looking. So this is a spit. Uh, here's, here's another one. Again, material kind of moved down, creating this extension connected at one side. Sometimes they curve, sometimes they, they go straight. And then you have a bay mouth bar, um, kind of similar-ish to a spit, but this is a sandbank that partially or completely closes access to a bay. So imagine uh, a spit and you kind of just continue the process to close off a bay, then it's known as a bay mouth bar. So uh, you can see here, here's a, an example of a bay mouth bar. It looks like that sediment deposition completely covered, uh, you know, closed off this area. Here's, a, here's another one. You do get a little inlet here, but for the most part, that sediment deposition closed off, off this bay. So it's a bay mouth bar. It, it bars the mouth of the bay from the ocean. Um, barrier islands. These are kind of tricky ones. Barrier islands are elongated islands of kind of loose, unconsolidated sediment, usually sand, uh, trending parallel to the shore. And these are uh, very large islands that are not connected to the shore. I guess they don't have to be large islands, but these are just kind of large islands not connected to the shore. They do run parallel to the shore, made up of mostly sand, known as barrier islands, because they kind of form a barrier to the mainland. So here's an example of a barrier island. The main, uh, the main coast would be way back here out of this picture. Uh, here's another barrier island. You can see the waves coming in this way, and we can see the mainland actually way back here. So they're kind of forming a barrier. They're not connected to the land. They form a, a barrier, and they can actually provide some protected waters. So while this is the open ocean to the right here, back here is kind of a protected water, um, kind of a little bit more calmer water. But these barrier islands, they take a beating in storms, hurricanes, etc. Uh, beaches. Beaches. A beach is exactly what it sounds like. It's a beach. Def strictly defined as a narrow, gently sloping strip of land that lies along the edge of an ocean, lake, or river. Nice sandy beaches. Sometimes they're nice and wide. Sometimes they're a little short. Looks like we're in a bay here as well. Lovely, though. Lovely, lovely. And then we get uh, my favorite, a tombolo. Tombolo. It's a bar of sand joining an island to the mainland. So you get an island, so maybe it's an island all on its own. You have the mainland, and sediment buildup, deposition, kind of forms a, a little connection of sand from the mainland to the, um, to the little island itself. And then you get, oops, wrong one. You get something that looks like this. So here's your little island. Here's the mainland. Here's that connection of sand. Now, due to tides, high tide, low tide, that might be covered. It might not be. So high tide, low tide. Um, so you want to be careful where you're at when the tides are changing. So that's a tombolo. Here's another tombolo. Uh, you can see uh, the island here, the mainland here, that connection of deposited material. All right. I tell you what. In, in all that number, the, all the mathy stuff from the code and all that business, forget all that garbage. Forget all that garbage. Let's just make the code negative one, shall we? You're welcome. So again, the code, let's just make it negative one. Forget all that earlier mathy stuff. Let's just make it negative one. You got it? <laughs> so what do